A study by the Elmhurst Institution has come to theorize that the more you use and actively shape your brain as you get older helps to slow down cognitive decrease. Consequently, it has been found that once you introduce the art of theater, the subject's cognitive abilities increase as well as their general psychological well-being and self-confidence. The research suggests that the more stimulation you offer your brain, the better it keeps up throughout the aging process. This institution has done several experiments with not only theater but the arts as well as another control group. The subjects were around 75 years old with a college education. Overall, the cognitive skills of the participants improved in several areas, including word recall, working memory, and problem solving, and their self-esteem also improved greatly. It is believed that the specialized techniques that actors use to bring their characters to life may also be employed to delay or even reverse cognitive decline amongst the aging. The more stimulation you offer the brain, the more you increase the chances that the brain will remain healthy throughout your life, says Helga Noyce, a professor of psychology. The acting process produces a particularly high degree of stimulation. The Institute's research are ongoing, but have shown outstanding results. The research done by the American Society on Aging shows several benefits of the arts to the elderly and has identified several different ways the arts can help. One is a sense of control mechanism which helps them feel as if they can master any activity they would like to attempt after having mastered a new activity focused on art. This gives the elderly a new sense of control of their life and surroundings while keeping their mental health stable. Influence of the mind on the body is an experience that allows them to exert control over their own body through mental will. They have found that the elderly tend to have better subconscious control over their nervous and immune system when they have a mastery at one facet of the arts. Brain plasticity is also increased highly by the arts. The elderly can keep their minds flexible and healthy through creati creatively challenging themselves through creative arts and projects. Another benefit is that the elderly that do engage in some sort of creative activity tend to have less falls, as well as a better grasp on depression, loneliness, and moral scales. Overall, the arts end up helping seniors and keeping healthy. Music. What can I say about music? Music is a vital form of the arts. Everything around us is music. To have a world without music is impossible because even silence itself can be considered music. As we continue to grow older, our senses decline and our hearing is affected by this decline. And so people begin to omit music out of their daily lives. To them, music slowly transforms into noise. And in response to that, this documentation had to be created. Now, creating and listening to music typically depends on hearing, flexibility of the voice, motor skills, and cognitive processing. Taking these things into consideration when we approach the musical arts are very important. There are various genres of music. Classical, hip-hop, blues, rap, rhythm and blues, jazz, and so on. Music is like any other section of the arts. When you are listening to a song, you are supposed to hear and feel the piece as if it was a poem or a short story. Every time I listen to music, I envision a ballroom dance or a theatrical play. And I feel that if I can do these wonderful things, others should be able to participate too. It isn't just enough to listen to music. Picking up a trumpet or blowing into a harmonica can also give the exact same euphoria. Music is all around us and we hear it every day whether it is hands clapping, birds chirping, or the air conditioner blowing. I reviewed an article by the former coordinator of the Quest program of Chabot College in Hayward, California. She organized the Quest art exhibit, an exhibit she expressed was quite special and represented 5%
of the elderly population institutionalized in her area. This is what we hope to accomplish, not just with music, but all of the arts. A safe haven for the elderly where we cannot only preserve the liberal arts, but restore the active imaginations that may have been trapped and lost over their lifespan. In effort to preserve their legacy, many seniors may find an enjoyable process to pass on the story of their life onto future generations by writing. You don't have to be a writer or even a good writer. What matters is that you have a chance to let others living now and in the future know about your life, the times in which you live, lessons, and all the little great stories that make up your life. There are many resources out there to help seniors jumpstart their biography. And a particularly helpful book is one written by Lois Daniel, entitled How to Write Your Own Life Story, a Step-by-Step -step Guide for the Non-Professional Writer. What are some pieces of advice that Lois Daniel gives to the non-professional writer looking to put their story on paper? Well, for stutters, she recommends devoting at least 30 minutes a day to writing. Getting into a routine is critical for any writer. Also, it is recommended to not worry about grammar and style. You should feel free and uninhibited when writing. It's the content that matters. Just be honest. Also, it is a good idea to be honest and to create a long list of subject matters, such as background information, like your parents, family members, your birth, to autobiographical events and facts, such as jobs, inventions, talents, hobbies, to abstract concepts, such as religion, future plans, failure, and hope. The more topics, the better. Once you begin your writing routine, you can simply pick whichever subject strikes your fancy on that given day. The key is to make it fun while also give you one of the greatest ways to tell your story for others to enjoy. Sometimes thinking outside the box is an excellent idea to find creative ways to involve seniors in the arts. In Germany, this is certainly the case, as several organizations are offering graffiti classes to seniors in what is turning out to be a wildly popular and beneficial form of expression. Graffiti teacher Judda Hens came up with the idea after working with apathetic teenagers. She found that graffiti art was a great way to jumpstart their minds and their, their creative energy. She then decided to apply this concept to motivate seniors. At first, there were some hurdles, as some seniors saw graffiti as merely vandalism and public eyesores. However, with education and the emergence of talented and respected graffiti artists around the world, such as the famous Banksy, seniors started to warm up to the idea. Not only did the demand for graffiti classes spread throughout Germany with the help of media attention, but many seniors started to enjoy the art and all of its benefits. While the idea of graffiti classes for seniors, seniors may seem a little outlandish to some skeptics, Dr. Jennifer Anders, a research assistant at the Albertinen Hospital's geriatric clinic in Hamburg, Germany, stated that the stereotype of a lonely grandmother in a pink cardigan who only plays card games is outdated. Today's aging population came of age in a different time. They grew up with the Rolling Stones and summer ex-hippies. Graffiti has several benefits outside of artistic expression for seniors. Classes add a social element to the lives of seniors as they interact with teachers and fellow seniors. Also, a good deal of stretching and bending is involved with the art of graffiti, so seniors have the opportunity to get some good exercise. Additionally, graffiti is an activity that involves the users of hand-eye coordination. And lastly, it gives a relatable task for seniors and younger generations to participate in, which may facilitate communication between the two groups. Overall, graffiti art has been a wonderful outside-the-box idea to get seniors involved with art, the community, and other groups, while also getting in some exercise. Pitfalls? Well, a few rogue seniors have used their newfound skills in non-sanctioned illegal areas, believe it or not. Whether you've always been an artist or never have tried to be one, it's never too late to continue, reinvent, or begin your journey into art. Let's look at three artists who use different approaches to make significant contributions in their later years. Giuseppe Verdi 
a masterful composer throughout his life, refused to slow down his production in the latter portion of his life. In fact, two of his most highly acclaimed operas, Falstaff and Otello, were written in his 70s. Verdi is praised for his enduring ability to stay true to his style and standards throughout the entirety of his life. Francisco José de Goya, much like Verdi, was a lifelong artist, but deferred from him in one big way. Instead of continuing his style, he reinvented himself. Perhaps due to acquired deafness and a progressively cynical view of the world, Goya's work became darker. In a shift in style and subject matter, Goya created his acclaimed black paintings while in his 70s. These paintings, in fact, are viewed by many art historians as having been exceedingly progressive for his time. Goya, not content with complacency, added a final wrinkle to his own progression in what is supposedly his last creation, The Milkmaid of Bordeaux, which, as you can see, departs from his grim tone and actually shows a delicate, sensitive approach. The final artist is maybe not as well known as Verdi and Goya, but perhaps this has some what to do with the fact that he was not a lifelong artist. In fact, Giuseppe Tomasi de Lampedusa was not known as an artist when he was alive. His only masterpiece, The Leopard, was not published until after his death. Lampedusa did not begin writing until his mid-fifties when he began his work on The Leopard. During the latter years of his life, his novel was rejected by publishers, but after his death, his creation finally found a home and became the top-selling novel in Italian history. In fact, The Observer recently featured The Leopard in its list of the top 10 best historical novels. Lampedusa is a prime example of how someone does not need to have a long history in any role that is never too late to try to make your mark on the world. He was a man that was driven and who saw it as his duty to make a contribution in this world. An excerpt in his memoir sums up his drive perfectly. When one reaches the decline of life, it is imperative to try and gather together as many as possible of the sensations which have passed through our own our particular organism. Few can succeed in thus creating a masterpiece, but all should find it possible to preserve in some such way things which without this slight effort would be lost forever. To keep a diary or write down one's own memories at a certain age should be a duty state imposed. Material thus accumulated would have inestimable value three or four generations. Many of the psychological and historical problems that assail humanity would be resolved. There are no memories, even those written by insignificant people, which do not include a social and geographic details of first-rate importance. Lampedusa's quotation adds an important aspect to why the arts are so beneficial to seniors. In addition to cognitive psychological and physical benefits the arts allow seniors the opportunity to express their lives to others and it's never too late to do so